My name is Tina and I am the mother of the late Louise Young. Um, many of you might have heard of Louise, but I'm aware that some of you may have not. Um, before we hear about the fantastic research which is going to be taking place in Louise's name, I just wanted to talk to you a bit about Louise, the person, the life she led and the journey with epilepsy. Louise, for, Louise had her first seizure at the age of three following an infection. That was the beginning of Louise's journey with the condition that saw many blood tests resulting in such a fear of needles, um, many trips from London to Wexford and many medications trying to find the right treatment for her epilepsy. And the right treatment was found for a period. Louise, epilepsy's, epilepsy almost became an afterthought in our household and she was taken off her medication for a period. That was until she reached her leave and start cycle at the age of 17. Louise had a breakthrough seizure. As a mother, it seemed so much worse now that she was entering adulthood. The worry and stress of leaving cert combined with the stress of wanting to go to college was affecting her condition. Louise struggled with having to go back on medication again. Even, even though her seizures were back, they didn't happen that often, and she felt she, she didn't have to be on medication. When her seizures were so sp sporadic, um, it, was a, it was sometimes a difficult conversation between Louise, her family, and her consultants, but Louise didn't let it get her down. She was a fighter. Despite the seizures returning in her leave and start cycle, Louise did go on to study media and business in Maynooth. She got a job in our local McDonald's and to help support herself through college, and she had a fantastic circle of friends who supported her on her journey. Seizures and epilepsy were always in the background, though, rearing its head at various occasions. Louise got her auras, and sometimes when she felt an aura coming on, she would somehow manage to not have a full seizure, so she was able to control it. She would be working, taking an order from customers coming through and could feel an aura coming on. And, and she would fixate on one area in the restaurant. It would only last a few seconds, but the customer waiting for their food would be none the wiser. At college, there was a few anxious trips to campus for after Louise had particularly bad seizures and there were various hospital stays for Louise as she continued her studies. But as I mentioned, Louise wanted to live her life with epilepsy to the full and not let epilepsy be her life. She decided that she wanted to do a J1. The mammy and me was worried, but I always admired her for her de determination. Epilepsy must have been scary for her, but she knew what she wanted to do and why she wanted to do it. So off Louise jetted to Chicago, where she had an absolute ball. On Louise, in, our Louise enjoyed the crack, and, cher and I cherish a video of her, which this time, and it still makes me laugh today. I know some of Louise's friends are joining us online. So this is an inside joke for them, but you can only imagine it involves the underground toilets and a quite a large bag filled with free toilet roll. <laughs> Louise was very, very chuffed with herself. Um, she was living the student life to the full and watching the pennies at the same time. As all parents here will, will know, you want your child to be always close to you. But I knew when Louise finished her studies and returned home that Wexford wouldn't be able to hold Louise. London was calling for her, so off she went to London. When she first landed in London, she lived with my sister Sharon. But it didn't take long, it didn't take long for Louise to find a job and make new friends. Louise had soon moved out of Sharon's and was sharing a house with her friend Emily. She loved every minute of her life in London, her nights out with friends, joining colleagues for team events, 
just generally being a social butterfly. I think during this time she was starting to take much more ownership of her epilepsy, but more aware of it and open about it. Despite being in a different country, she remained within the Irish system, travelling back for medical appointments. She recognised that she was experiencing bad side effects from a medication and advocated it for herself to be switched to a new medication. Mammy was no longer allowed into her appointments. I remember being shocked when she told me side effects she was experiencing what were suicidal thoughts. But I also remember being, feeling proud for her for recognising this and making the right decision for herself. And then along came COVID and with it brought so much worry for Louise, as I'm, I'm sure many of the people here will understand. Louise was a social butterfly, so being cooped up didn't suit her much, and she recognised this could have an impact on her mental health. The option to work from home was there, so she decided to come back home as soon as she was able and wait out the storm with the family. It was a worrying time for Louise, living with a long-term health condition in a pandemic world and in general, managing her own epilepsy while switching meds and managing side effects. While we, while we as a family had lent on Epilepsy Ireland for information and support about how to support Louise on her journey with the condition, she was now old enough to have these direct conversations on how she was feeling and questions and concerns she might have had. It was really during this period that she lent on Epilepsy Ireland for support and through this support, recognised fully that she could help others with her experiences. Our Louise was always so heart kind hearted and always wanted to help others. So as soon as she recognised this, it didn't take her long to get fully involved. She took to raising money for Epilepsy Ireland through the VHI Women's Mini Marathon and then followed up by sharing her story with epilepsy on Ep Epilepsy Ireland's social media channels. We were, so, we were all so proud of her. She had full acceptance now of her epilepsy and recognised how her story could help others. She was thrilled with the money she raised and of the impact her video had. I think everyone who knew her would agree. Louise was getting, was just getting started in terms of awareness um, raising for epilepsy. She was just about to begin that new phase of, epilep of her epilepsy journey, where she was about to share her experiences with anyone who could listen to her to help others. I so wish that I was talking to you today about what she went on to do. But on the 8th of January 2021, Louise's life came to an, an, an end due to SUDEP. That evening at six, six o'clock, my neighbour my neighbor waved to Louise at the front window and Louise waved back. My daughter Kate returned to the house at 6.20 and Louise was gone. That is how quickly SUDEP happened for Louise. I will always remember being met by a paramedic as I entered the house telling me he, he did everything he could and how he tried to bring her back. I don't want anyone, I, I don't want anyone to experience what our family have experienced in a room full of people with epilepsy and family members of people with epilepsy. I would appeal to you to please learn more about SUDEP and what can be done to reduce the risks. Be aware of SUDEP and have conversations with your medical team about it. Knowledge is power. And the more we know about something, the better chance we have to potentially address it. But that is not the primary reason why I'm speaking to you, to you today. Louise was adored by all who knew her. And as I mentioned, she was just getting started with her raise, uh, awareness raising journey. After her sudden passing, Louise's friend support approached us about setting up a GoFundMe page in, in her memory. The page went live 
at 4 p.m. on January the 9th. By 8 p.m., over 15,000 had been donated. Little did we know at the time, but this was not the end of Louise's awareness raising journey, as there has been so many incredible efforts in her name since her untimely passing, both to raise funds for Epilepsy Ireland and to raise awareness of SUDEP and epilepsy. Between efforts from family, friends and colleagues, we would estimate that over 50,000 euros has been raised in her memory. These efforts are what has led us here today. This research and alarm fund, which has been established by Epilepsy Ireland in Louise's name. The next two speakers are going to speak in more detail about what the research is hoping to achieve and investigate. But just to say that we are so excited to see what happens and hope that all that it will create a lasting legacy for Louise. While we'd give another, while we'd give anything to have her back with us, we have no doubt that she would be beaming about what has what has and continues to be done in her name by all the epilepsy community. With that, I'd like to thank you for listening to me talk about our wonderful Louise, and I will pass you to the next speaker who will discuss the research project which has recently begun. Thank you.